Thank you for attending this PowerCast, how to get started using backup recovery and media services by I, by Tom Huntington of Help Systems and Merv Inventor of IBM. This PowerCast is sponsored by Help Systems. My name is Ian Cartwright. I am Education Manager for Common, and I appear on your screen as webcast host. If you're experiencing any technical issues during the presentation, use the send me a message using the chat message box, the dialog box, bottom right of the screen. If you'd like to send a written question to Mervyn or to Tom during the presentation, you can use the Q&A panel, also the lower right section of the screen, and select to send to all panelists. Uh, Tom and Mervyn will answer your questions at the end of the presentation as time permits. Uh, I'm going to have Tom and Mervyn introduce themselves. I'm going to hand control over to Tom to have us go ahead and take us away. Tom, you're in control. And welcome everyone to yet another webinar from Help Systems. Today's topic being BRMS, Backup and Recovery of Media Services. We're looking forward to educating you on this topic. I'm Tom Huntington, Executive Vice President of Technical Solutions at Help Systems. And I've been with Help Systems now for a little over 30 years. I'm also an IBM Power Champion, and we're excited to have this topic for you. Uh, Mervyn, a little bit about your background and, and why you're the expert on BRMS. Hi everyone, um, I am, I work for IBM, I'm currently in Lab Services, I used to work for uh, in IBM Support Center for 20 years, uh, supporting primary BRMS and uh, backup recovery solutions. Well, thank you, Mervyn, and uh, let's get started with our topic today, our first polling question we have, we want to know what your experience is with BRMS. So how many years of experience do you have? More than 10 years, five to 10 years experience, one to five years experience, less than one year. I have no experience at all with BRMS. Um, so I know many of you may have inherited the product uh, and don't have the right education you need it. So that's why we're bringing you this webinar. I will also tell you that if you belong to LinkedIn, there is actually a BRMS LinkedIn group. So if you want to join that, just go out there and request membership. And it's a great resource um, for what's new with BRMS and to ask questions of other experts that are using the BRMS product. So just a few more seconds here before we close this polling question and take a look at the results from what is your experience with BRMS. Right. Ian, should we be seeing the uh, results from this? I don't quite see them yet on my end. Yeah, it takes a couple seconds after okay. for the last folks after the timer. So here are the results. Okay, awesome. I'm just a little, little. Uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, nervous or anxious? All right. Looks like uh, wow. Okay, 46% of you have no experience with BRMS. 25%, uh, one to five years. Um, we have some with uh, more than 10 years experience. Well, we want to thank uh, the entire uh, customer base that have joined us today. It looks like, uh, Mervyn, we have a, a challenging group because we have some with no experience and some with a lot of experience, but I'm sure you'll point out something for everybody. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Mervyn, to get us rolling through uh, today's agenda. Okay, thank you, Tom. Uh, okay, so um, we're going to go through this. We do have time at the end of the uh, presentation for Q&A, so if you don't mind holding your questions until then, or submitting your questions in the meantime, uh, however you submit them, and then uh, we can discuss the questions afterwards. Um, okay, so what is BRMS? Uh, so the agenda today we're going to go through is what is BRMS, what can really do for you, uh, and we're going to go through installing BRMS, how to implement it, uh, it's really simple, um, and what, and then we're going to go through what are the different parts of BRMS and uh, how you, you create the different things. So, uh, let me do a page down. Okay, so are you really ready for a, a recovery? One of the biggest problems that we have is uh, in today's world is that uh, customers say, I, I do a disaster recovery test. And they go out and just before they, they plan the disaster recovery test, say next week, and just before they do the recovery, the, the DR test, they do a full system save. Nine times out of ten, in the event of a real disaster, you don't have the time to do a full system save just before you go out and do, uh, do your DR test. So you you may not be ready for a DR, a, a DR test. So that is why we have BRMS. And um, okay. 
So what, what can BMS do for you? BMS is, a, is, a, is like a one-stop shop that can do everything for your, uh, for your product. And that's, that's product ID is wrong. Uh, BMS, uh, it manages your media, automates your backup, it simplifies your recoveries, uh, provides detailed reporting uh, for what has been backed up, what hasn't been backed up, supports tape library, uh, uh, tape media libraries, it supports uh, virtual tape, and that internal virtual tape and virtual tape libraries. It has the ability to save data to the cloud uh, and also uh, you can do software encryption with it. Uh, BMS is divided into three basic parts. Uh, there's the base function, and this allows you, to, uh, it has all the functionality, the, the, uh, I would say 90% uh, of the functionality of BRMS within it. So if you just have the base function, you could do almost everything that you want to do with BRMS. Uh, option one is the network option. And this allows you to uh, network your systems so that you can share uh, saved history information. Uh, it does one one miss uh, well one myth about the network uh, networking function. It does not allow you to use other systems uh, tape drives to do backups. You still have to have a tape drive of some sort uh, on the on the network option in the network option. Uh, I mean, attached to the system in order to do a backup. The, the network function just allows you to share the BRMS database between them. And then we have the advanced function feature, which allow, uh, which is the um, some of the advanced functions that BRMS has, like software encryption, uh, media library management. You can find the system names. There's hierarchical storage management, which involves migration and or and archiving, which is uh, archiving is the ability to take data that hasn't been used for an extended period of time, and you move it off to, to tape, and it helps free up space on your system. And if someone goes and touches that object or wants to, uh, wants to use that object, BMS will dynamically re recall the database files and then store it back to the a lot of people ask, uh, what does archiving do for you? Uh, archiving can help reduce your, not only does it help reduce your space on your system, but also because you have this, you, you don't have these old database files out there that no one's looking at, but you have to keep them for legal reasons. Um, it helps you re reduce the backup times because you're not backing up anymore. Um, so the BRMS uh, has got, uh, these are the defaults of all, all the different parts of BRMS. So you have different, uh, you have a system policy, a backup, archive, and uh, re recovery policy. Then BRMS is divided, you, you would have a media policy, uh, move policy, storage location, media classes, tape devices, and control groups. The control groups are what defines, what gets, you define what has been backed up, uh, your media policies defines uh, what you, where you're backing it up to, and how they are like your retention period, uh, and what media class you're going to be using. Uh, it also points to the me the move policies. So, uh, and all this, and then your move policies point to where you're going to move your tapes to, uh, like offsite locations. Because you generally don't want to keep your tapes at the same location where your backups are done. No. BRMS ties this all together so that it's very easy to manage. Um, uh, installing BRMS, you just uh, you have to first install media storage extensions. That's the one on the on the top right hand side of here. That needs to be installed. Uh, that is what the interface is between BRMS and the, the operating system. Uh, you then install your products, your um, your base option of BRMS, and then alternatively, optionally, I should say, you install uh, the network feature option one and option two if needed. You add your license key, uh, apply the latest, latest BRMS, uh, the latest PTFs, uh, the latest QM PTF if you're not up to date, your, uh, and your save restore group PTF, which includes the BRMS PTF. Uh, if you don't install the latest, if you don't install the latest group PTF or you already have it and you've installed the BMS product afterwards, then you would need to install the latest BMS PTF. 
to make sure that it's all okay. Um, it's strongly recommended that the various PTFs are, I mean, that you have the same level of PTF on all the systems. And when you install BRMS, BRMS installs three different, uh, BRMS installs two libraries, the QBRM and the QSBRM. Option 18 of SS1, the media storage extensions, installs another library called QMSE. And these are all IBM libraries, but the QUSER BRM library is actually a user library. It gets saved as part of all user. So that's the main BRMS database uh, uh, library that contains all the files about all your backups. Uh, BRMS will support, uh, I mean, when, you, when you're when using uh, take media libraries, BRMS will go in and select the scratch tape or, or uh, what we call an expired tape. It'll mount and demount the, the, the drives within the tape library. And if you choose to run movement or send your tapes off site, it, will automatically, it can automatically eject the tapes from the tape library and put it into the IO slot, the input uh, export slot. You really you don't have to manage the tape like the tape drives anymore. Uh, once BRMS is installed and you have your media uh, enrolled in BRMS, uh, you will be able to go into do a workmate BRM and you will be able to see all your tapes, whether they're active, expired, uh, when they were created, uh, the look when they expire, the location name, uh, when they need to move, and also if they're part of any media class, and also. We'll discuss a little bit later, but it, it tells you if the, the tape's in uh, deduplicated or not, or needs to be uh, du duplicated, I should say, not deduplicated. Um, we also have uh, options with many printouts available, and one of them is the, the media report, and you can, you can also print a report of all media by expiration date. Uh, and or if it's expired and when it was expired. So there's lots of different information that BRMS does have about the different media, so you don't have to keep track of it anymore. Uh, BRMS movement, uh, when, it, when, uh, there's a, when you run movement, or you can also choose to run the move report separately, BRMS will tell you what media is gonna move from one location to another location. Uh, it'll give you a list of the media, uh, when, it when it's gonna expire, when it's gonna move, uh, the move date and the move policy and the date that it's, it was moved, going to move. Uh, BRMS also has uh, threshold information so that if your media uh, is old uh, or if it's got a lot of uh, got a lot of read write errors, it can tell you. Uh, you can also set different. Uh, you can set different parameters within uh, BRMS to say that if a volume is used more than 50 times, give me a warning about it. It will not stop using it, but it'll just give you warnings that the volume is, uh, has been used more than 50 times. Or um, <clears throat> Where you define your backups, uh, BRMS has what we call it, uh, uses primary control groups. You can go... Uh, when you install BRMS, BRMS does create three three control groups that are uh, the, the, like default ones. The star BKU BRM uh, backup is the one that backs up all the user data. The star sys group backs up all system data, and the star system one is the equivalent of a GoSave 21. If you if you ran a GoSave 21, the star system would uh, be the be the equivalent of that. Uh, and then we're going to go have a look at the test save one. We're just going to go create one over here. And this is this is more or less what it looks like. Um, just a simplified view of it. Uh, there's the, you would have, in this case, the security data. We we're going to save all the libraries that start with LIB. Uh, and then we're going to save these other three libraries that, um, that you, you want to save. And now you, this is very, uh, flexible, you can specify lots of different things within it, and as much as or as little data as you want. You also have the ability to specify if you're going to be doing a full or incremental save, top of the screen over there, and you can choose to have different things do incremental saves. But, uh, 
Uh, you also have the ability to what we call uh, retain object level detail. This allows you to go in and drill down to be able to, to restore an individual object or individual member. We have to drill down within BRMS to go and restore it. Individual ones, BRMS has the ability to keep all that information. BRMS also has the ability to do a called save while active. Um, and that is doing a save while the objects are in use. Now, I just want to just pause a moment on this save while active over here because uh, BRMS under the cover still uses normal save restore commands. Um, and the save while active is a bit of a a, it's a bad name for it, really, in my opinion. Um, in order to save any object or any file on, on an IBM I system, you still have to get some sort of a lock on the file. Uh, if, if we cannot get a lock, even with save or active, this, the object will not be uh, able to be saved. So a, a better name for this is save while quest or save while system in pause mode, or that, the jobs in pause mode. Ideally, the, the designed way to do a, a way that the table active was originally designed was that you would pause or quiesce your system, start the table active, get a checkpoint, and once the checkpoint is reached, then you can release you can hold uh, your, uh, release all your jobs or uh, unpause your system. Uh, BRMS does have uh, additional ways to do it. We have what we call is a, mon a monitor save while active. And BMS can monitor for the checkpoint to be reached for on all your libraries and then release it. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone understands that BMS can do nothing more than what the operating system can do from a stable active. Um, BMS also has the ability to do what we call parallel saves. Um, and it, what this does is in a single job, if you want to use multiple tape drives, if you have multiple tape drives available, um, a lot of customers are moving towards VTLs or virtual tape libraries today, and tape drives are more freely available. Um, so what you can do is uh, you can use specify multiple tape drives, and then a lot of the time this helps improve your backup times. Uh, and you don't have to manage it. Uh, BMS will automatically either spread the libraries across the different tape drives, or it will put, spread the, put a different uh, library on each tape drive. And you can have between, you can run a single job with up to 32 tape drives. Um, <coughs> it, um, and when you do when you do restores, you have the ability. If you don't have the same number of tape drives, BMS can use fewer tape drives to do restores. However, we do recommend for different reasons use the same number of tape drives. Um, parallel support is available on. There's some new, numerous parameters within BMS, and this 45 minutes or one hour is just not enough time to pick up, discuss everything. We have what we call God libraries or test libraries or user so IBM specify individual ASPs also generics and if you specify any of those uh, well BMS can spread the whole library if you, it'll put a, one library on each tape drive and whenever whichever tape drive um, whichever library finishes that's where the next library will go to um, all that uh, library spreading as opposed to object spreading um, restore of parallel saves. Um, was, um, you can as you can use one tape drive, or you can. Uh, this will be. I mean, if you do want to restore an object, a, a library using the, the parallel support, you can use one of these. It will. Um, the entire library is will be on one tape drive um, or one tape cartridge, and you would be able to do. Uh, Restores using native restore commands. Uh, if you're doing it, what we true object, uh, if you remember, um, if, you, if you do use uh, object spreading, then you would you would need what we call a media definition to do that. And I don't want to get into too much detail about that because it complicates it and complicate things. But I uh, I would say that 95% of saves done within BRMS. You have the ability to restore the data outside of BMS if needed. 
However, we do strongly recommend that you do use PRMS to do saves and restores. So in order to set up the, uh, in BRMS, we have, uh, in the control groups, we have what we call attributes. And this is where you can go in and set the minimum and maximum number of, of resources. Uh, as you can see, you can have from between one and 32, we just have a two of them per job. Uh, in the, you can specify the backup devices, you can choose if you want to sign off interactive users. Um, and there's many other parameters within BRMS that you can do, like if you want to unload a tape, uh, if you want to write a sequence one or you want to append to media, you can choose to IPL the system. Uh, I don't have all the different options over here. There's many different things that you can do within BRMS. Um, and in order to start a, a, a backup, you have what we call a start BKU BRM. That's the, the command that will, and you go specify the name of the control group. Uh, you can schedule these backups to be run on, on what we call the BRMS console. So that you can schedule them to be run at uh, when no one's there, you also have the ability to submit them to batch. Uh, you also have the ability to submit them to the controlling subsystem, uh, where you can, you can run a, a, a job in when, um, when no one's there as well, that you don't, you don't have to be physically be there, and you can go run a, what they call a full system. Full system. You don't actually have to be physically there. Um, Within a, within a control group, you have the ability to specify, in the media policy, you have the ability to specify the, uh, the retention period. And when you run this, when you do the backup, you can choose to overwrite that. At the bottom over there, there's the retention period. If you want to just say that you want to do a special backup of, a, of, of some data that's in the control group, rather than go out and recreate the, a whole new media policy and control group, you can run the existing control group and just change the retention period. Uh, specified rather than the default, what's specified in the media policy, you can go specify that you want to save that for a longer or shorter period. Um, this is just the same thing. You also have the ability, if a, if a control group fails for, for whatever reason and you want to restart rather than go start right from the beginning of the save, you can choose to go start a, at, a, at, a, at a sequence number and it's the big library for arguments like if you had a it, it failed halfway through the all user you could go and the all user was sequence number 30 in the control group you could go specify 30 over there and start at library Irvin for argument sake and that that way you don't have to go resave all the other libraries you can go restart from that library point onwards um we have Everything that happens in BRMS, it, it, there's a BRMS log. Uh, the, the BRMS uh, the display log BRM, and every single command or everything, every time someone goes into a BRMS command or a, a BRMS menu, BRMS, we do log everything that over here. Uh, everything that happens within BRMS is logged in the BRMS log. You keep that separate to the from the job logs, separate from the history log and separate from the, the chooses of a message. We still send messages, the job logs, the normal job logs of the job still exist and everything like that. There's just a, a separate file that has all the, the BMS information. Um, once the data is saved, BMS has what we call um, uh, a workmed IBRM, you know, where you can go view the history and you can go in and go search for whatever you want to, and you can do option seven to restore uh, whatever object, whatever library you want. If you were saved object level detail, you could select option nine to go work with the, the different objects, and you could go specify which object you want to restore. So this, if you want to restore multiple objects, I mean, or multiple libraries, you could go select them all, whichever ones you want to restore, and VMS will automatically go load the tape if it's available in the tape library, Restore from that um, that volume and do the restore. Once you do a uh, workman IBM option seven to hit and you hit enter, BMS will bring up this, a screen that looks very really similar to this one, 
and it will tell you what's remaining and how many objects still need to be restored and the remaining size. Uh, we also have what we call recovery reports, uh, uh, and one of them is the a when you when you print your recovery reports, you will get a report that looks similar to this. Will tell you which which volumes you need to it, to restore your system in the event of a disaster recovery. So it, if you ever wanted to do in this example over here, if you wanted to do it, you would need all these tapes in order to re do your full system restore, and then. We also have a what we call a recovery um, report, and this lists this recovery report is fairly e extensive, but it lists every single uh, item that needs to re be recovered, and it tells you the the volume ID and everything that you need to restore. Okay, so at this point in time, we're going to have another polling question. Thank you, Mervyn. Uh, gives you a little break here while we have a question about where you need help with BRMS. You can select multiple ones. As a matter of fact, select multiple ones and then submit it just so you don't submit it ahead of time. But maybe you need help re reviewing the restore process, setting up the product, managing your media better, automating the tape media library, reviewing your daily backups and making sure that things are being backed up the way you want auditing your backups, or maybe you need help just monitoring BRMS itself. So uh, go ahead and answer this question. Again, remind you that uh, we bring many webinars to the market. Um, matter of fact, on November 19th, we have a webinar coming out on RDI, Rationale Developer for I, and if you use that tool, this will be a great opportunity. We have Ask the Experts coming on that uh, November 19th webinar. Look for that on the Help Systems website. So let's see here shortly where people need help with BRMS. Is it setting it up, managing media? Uh, looks like we have a pretty good dispersed results here. Auditing my backup seems to be the number one issue. People want to make sure that things are being backed up properly. And you know, after all, I do always tell people if you uh, want to look at one thing, can you restore your data and certainly auditing and making sure that what's being backed up is important. Managing the media is important, automating the tapes and then monitoring BRMS. Uh, thank you for answering that polling question. I guess Mervin, back over to you for you to continue on and remind you also customers out there, if you do have specific questions, you can use the Q&A to send us a question as we move along. So I think Mervyn, you still have control, so go right ahead and click on the screen and move on to the next topic. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. Awesome. So BMS also does have a, uh, a Navigator plugin. Uh, in older releases, we, it was a client base. In the new releases, um, 271, we had a, a Navigators, that was the URL that you go in and connect to your system. And it uh, it's for the point and click people that, that, that really want to do everything through the, want to do things through a web browser. You have the ability to do it, uh, use it. It's supposedly easy to use wizards that you can just click and just, it, just it, presents all the options to you about what you, what you want to do. You don't have to go in and uh, type a lot of the stuff. It's just, it's just mostly all point and click. And it has wizards in create backup policies, add tape to BMS, uh, initialize tapes, uh, create, create and add items to uh, backup policies, and restore backup, item, backup, backup items as well. Uh, you can also you can almost everything that you can do in green screen you can do in uh, in, in GUI or uh, my navigator. There's a couple of things that are only available in the navigators. A couple, one of them specifically is the email report, and also at the bottom over here we have the enterprise function uh, that allows you to monitor multiple systems uh, to see whether the backups have completed. It is a fairly limited uh, option. Uh, it just allows you to basically the enterprise option. Really, uh, it gives you an option to see if backups have completed normally, and also um, if um, 
uh, you can you can send all your small files to the same place. Um, so uh, you also have the ability to filter out different messages that are logged in the in the, in the some people don't want to see all the messages in the BMS log. You can go choose what you want to want to do. Um, when you're doing restores, BMS also has the option of, of the IFS data or your directories. BMS has the option to uh, create the parent directories. That option is available in normal restores. So you have that option in the IFS. Um, BMS also has the ability, when you do a backup you know, in a control group, BMS has the ability to go out and create what we call lists and a control group that will add all the objects that fail to save. It will add all these into a, spe uh, into a special control group. And then at a later stage, when you know that you can save these backups, when those objects are, uh, are not locked, you'll be able to go run this control group and it will save those. Um, BMS also has the ability, and we're going to cover that a little bit later on, to work with together with Flash Copy. Uh, we'll discuss Flash Copies a little bit later on, uh, but we do have the BMS does the ability to integrate together with Flash Copy and to allow uh, Flash Copies to work. So um, when you implement BMS, uh, it is basically uh this is the, the the summary so first of all you need to identify review and design your backup strategy if you don't have one uh you need to create your storage location review your different media color classes you can up, update your devices modify add and modify move and media policies make sure that your system policies and backup policies are all correct create your control groups enroll your tapes uh, it's always recommended to do a full system save once you're all ready so that you have a good starting point. Uh, and then you need to make sure that you run BMS maintenance and media movement procedures are all running correctly. Uh, review your reports and address any problems and then plan a recovery test. As I said before, don't want Reverend, to go. Yes, sorry? Reverend, this is Tom. I think somehow we advanced our slides too far. So this mm -hmm. is, toward, yeah. Um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, that's why I just wanted to show what happened over here. Right? Yeah, that's because I was like, you shouldn't be on flash copy yet. Let's go back. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Sorry. No problem. Go back further the other way. Keep going. Yeah, You're on, yeah go back further. Um, this is where we were. Something, yeah. something happened there. Let's go ahead. Was. There you go. Yeah, you should be going through those. So I'm not sure. Okay, I don't know what happened. Right, here we go. After. No, it's it's just jumping. It's going from. Oh, wait a bit. I think. Okay. Never mind. I think I see what's happening over here. Okay. I see what's happening. Never mind. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I just jumped a whole bunch of slides. I don't know. Yeah, we did accidentally. So everybody apologize. Just hang in there for a second. We'll back up a little bit and. Move on from there. There, okay. Yes, that's okay. That's where we should be. Okay, that navigator. There we go. So this is what the navigator looks like. I, sorry, I just, I, I'm going to be caught offside over there. So we, back to the navigator side. So this is what the navigator would look like when you go into the navigator. You would see your um, the enterprise services, the archive policy, uh, control groups, backup control groups, and so forth. Okay. Uh, and once again, yeah, this that right there, eh? yeah. No, that's right. You're yeah. good. Okay, so uh, we also have a backup exit program where if you can go in and create a program, and there's some it has some guidelines that you can do, and then if one if one of the entries in the control group fails, it will automatically go out and run this program and do whatever you want it to do. Um, this is the missed object policy that I spoke about. You can go specify that. Uh, we also have the ability to force full backups after a certain period of time. Um, if you haven't had, if you were doing incremental backups uh, and you haven't had a full backup after X number of days, we will automatically ignore the full backup, and, uh, the incremental backup and full backup. 
VMS also has the ability to do a, what we call safe sys info, which is what we would call a online backup of your system information, uh, rather than doing a safe sys uh, in a restricted state. Uh, this is a little bit of a strict, I mean, uh, of, it has some restrictions and you need to be very careful about using this uh, and you need to make sure that you test your recovery. Plan. When we do parallel saves, BMS has, we have a thing over here that states if you're doing a parallel save or how many drives we use for a parallel save. Um, when we do, when you're doing recoveries, if you want to, if you want, if you did a parallel save and you had multiple tape drives and multiple cartridges, you could specify the, you have the ability to specify um, what volume to use. Uh, I mean, you can go specify, select uh, individual volume and restore that and then submit a se separate one. We have on, we have a famous wiki that goes out and discusses all this as well. Um, you have the ability to, on the, when you, we have a commands that do a restore live BRM or restore object BRM and so forth. You can go in and specify a specific save level that you want or a save date, and you can go in. We almost automatically go find the latest uh, entry uh, for that specific date and do a restore of that object for you or for the library. Um, this is where we I jumped out. This out, somehow I discussed this already when we restore. Uh, VMS also has the ability to, some customers want to do a, a append, uh, so they, 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 you save your data and you append to a tape every day, and then you want to duplicate that data. Now, previously in the old versions, older versions of VMS, we had to, you, you had to either know what you wanted to, re, to duplicate or you would restore, uh, you would duplicate the whole tape every time. Now VMS has the ability just to duplicate the new data that's been appended to the tape. That's what it's all about. Um, and we also added the ability to save the VMS recovery information to the DupeMed BRM. Uh, the next thing is that we want to talk about is uh, software encryption. VMS does have the ability to do software encrypt to encrypt your data when it goes to the backup. Uh, um, and this just discusses what, it, what you need and what is encrypted. Uh, only the data is encrypted, um, on, and only user data is encrypted. Save sys, your IBM libraries, Q libraries, and configuration and security data will not be encrypted. Uh, for, and for this reason, it also um, encryption. Uh, as you can see, you cannot encrypt a whole bunch of all this information over here, and the the bottom point over there. I think we should let you highlight this in red. Your performance of saves and restores will be affected by software encryption. So, and for that bottom one over there specifically, this is one of the reasons we do recommend uh, hardware encryption. Uh, hardware encryption is done at a hard, at a at a tape level or the tape library level, and when using this, there's little or less than one of a percent of performance. So we. Have, I can all customers that I've set up with hardware encryption. I have never seen a customer have a problem with uh, using hardware encryption. Using software encryption, uh, your backup times could go up to it as long as four times longer your backup. So that's what for that reason we recommend using it too much. Stable Active. I did discuss this a little bit about Stable Active and how it works. Um, one of the problems with Stable Active is that you had a Stable Active of your IFS and you have your stable active of your, your libraries, which had to be separate, join the two together. VMS has uh, the ability to do uh, something like this, where we, we, we call a multiple uh, sync ID, and this allows you to, VMS will go wait for two, uh, the two jobs to get, this, to get a checkpoint before it starts, restarts the subsystem, works together with a uh, stable active. And that's just an example of how to set it all up. And, uh, and this is the missed object policy that I discussed. Um, VMS also has the ability to save private authorities. Uh, if you're going to be restoring to different systems, we, rec we don't recommend doing this uh, saving private authorities on an all user. Uh, this 
the intent of this is just to save if you're going to be restoring a library to a different system and you want the private authority to save with it. Uh, and there's the object, save object BRM, we'll save the same, same command. Uh, this discusses parallel saves over here, uh, the different types of parallel saves. You have the stereo saves, um, you have a true parallel save, which is where we spread the objects. We have a serial save where it's one library per tape. Um, and the default BMS will actually go in and determine whether or not it should be doing a what you call a true parallel save or a parallel serial save, or if it should just be doing a serial save. BMS can do this for you. Uh, and then you also have the option within BRMS to go specify what type of save you want with a parallel save or serial save, or you let BRMS decide for. Okay, so flash copy. This is where we jumped in somehow earlier. So what a flash copy does is you have your production system, you flash copy, you bring up the, the what we call the flash copy disks onto a clone system and you do your backup. The advantage with this is that there's the, the backup time on the production system is, is almost zero. Uh, this only works with external storage. You must have SAN storage. Um, it integrates pretty well fully with it, uh, together with some toolkits that lab services offer. Uh, so you do your flash copy, and it, it, the flash copy of the, on the SAN storage literally takes seconds to, to run, and then you IPL your backup system, uh, and you do your backup over there. And then afterwards, BMS database is copied back to the production system, and it actually looks like the backup occurred on the uh, production system. And if you're using BMS networking, BMS has the ability to stop other systems from updating the BMS database on the production system, because when you restore the, the BMS queues of BRM from the from the backup system, it's going to overlay any of those updates that came from the other systems. The network. So that's where the whole uh, network comes. So um, you do need the network feature for this, uh, and we have different options in that go over here. Because you will need the backup over there. Um, I don't think I've been over here. And we limit the ability to do backup uh, activity if you're using it, one of our toolkits. We limit the, the, the ability to do what we call BMS activity on the production system while the flash copy process is happening. And if you don't have the toolkit, we, you, you do need to limit your changes that you make will be, will be lost when BMS is restored. So in, to enable this, you need to enable the flash copy. And then we also have, uh, you, you can you go tell BMS in what state you are in. You can go run an INZ BRM star flash copy, and you can tell it whether you're in the start process, the end process, uh, the end backup, and there's also a start backup mode. If, uh, media management. Um, we have the ability, if you're in a network and you want to make sure that the, each system has the uh, sufficient volumes, you do a start. Uh, you can do a start bell BRM, uh, start balance BRM, and BRMs will go to assign ownership to different volumes. Uh, BRMs has the ability to do automatic dupli uh, duplication. So once the save completes, BRMs will automatically start duplicating the tape for you. You do need to make sure that you have sufficient tape drives for you. So if you you do need a minimum of two tape drives to do a uh, to do a dupe. This is how the automatic dupe gets set up. Um, for recoveries, uh, which there's the ability to restore your uh, private authorities if they were saved, uh, and BMS now also has the ability. If um, we've always told customers in for many years that. If you have physical and logical files, that your logical files need to be restored after the physical files. Um, however, we now have the ability to restore them in either order. If a logical file is restored and it is not, uh, the physical file is not available, uh, BMS will, will remember that and 
once the restore is complete, it will re it will run the restore deferred object command automatically and reassociate the logicals with the logicals. And so this is the BMS summary implementation that we're going through and how you need to install this. I actually did cover this a little bit early on by accident. So this will this is the, the, the whole design of how you would implement BRMS. Um, monitoring BRMS, there's numerous ways to monitor the BRMS. There's recovery reports, there's uh, logs. I'm not going to go through all of these, but there's, these are all the different options. One of the, on the polls that we had, how can you monitor BRMS? This is one of the options. That, these are the numerous options that you can use to monitor BRMS. So in summary, BRMS, uh, you can choose to do uh, prioritize what you what applications you want to, to uh, when you're doing recovery, you want to do what applications you want to build up first. Uh, BRMS prevents you from overwriting data because if you try to initialize the active tape, BRMS will prevent you from doing that. Uh, you can you'll know exactly where your tapes are. Uh, your, when you're doing a disaster recovery, BRMS has a step-by-step -step process on how you can do this. Uh, it tells you how long your restores are going to be running for, approximately, or how much data is going to be restored. You don't have the ability to tell you how long it's going to be. Uh, you, you have the ability to save spool file that files. You can do that natively as well. And the bottom line is that you can have confidence in your backup that you have the data that you need in the event of a disaster. Okay. Well, thank you, Mervyn. If you want to move on to the next slide, um, we'll bring up uh, our following uh, last polling question. Ian's going to launch that in the background. Um, of course, we brought this webinar to you from Help Systems, and uh, we want to know how we can help you at Help Systems. You can select all that apply. Um, we need additional training on BRMS. Let us know by selecting that one. Um, you might have somebody that's new to your team and they're looking for that, you know, what is IBM I, what's a job queue, what's a memory pool, uh, how to get do basic backups. Uh, we do have a online basic operations 101 training course we thought that um, many of you might be interested in. Uh, we want to look at hardware-based replication along with backups become high availability often as a topic or disaster recovery. And uh, we certainly can connect you up with PowerHA and what to do there. And those who prefer software-based replication with journaling, uh, we also can do a discussion around the Robot HA product. Now, one of the things that I do a lot of at Help Systems is what we call technology updates with our customers. And these are one-on-one -on -one calls where we take you through all the different uh, technologies on IBM I, of course, and um, that we do. But also we can talk about other platforms too, if there's a need to integrate Windows with IBM I or Linux with IBM I, that is always a topic for us. So we'll leave that polling question uh, open and uh, give you an opportunity to answer that as we move into our Q&A part of today's session. Just to remind you, Help System does a lot with cybersecurity on IBM I and off of IBM I. Uh, we do a lot with the automation with uh, robot and and actually we did talk about monitoring. We have a couple different ways we can monitor BRMS. We can integrate that into robot monitor and provide a graphical monitoring solution for you and or we can use Halcyon to help monitor your uh, BRMS backups and then of course we do BI and uh, we actually have built in some dashboards for BRMS with our insight analytics so that gives us the ability to uh, provide a dashboard around multi partitions of BRMS. And then finally, um, document management. We do help people out with document management, uh, spool files, archiving, those kinds of things using the uh, WinSpool product. So let's uh, turn it back over to you, Ian, to see if you have any queued up questions for us from today's discussion. Great. Uh, a couple things. Uh, you can send in questions using the QA panel. Uh, right frame of the screen, select to send to all panelists so Tom and Mervin and I can all see it. That's one. Uh, second, we did have a couple questions about a replay from today and a handout that will be available later on. It will be available from tomorrow morning and everybody will receive an email uh, from Common uh, when that's available. And the third thing is the poll is still open, so please do take a moment to uh, provide your feedback to help systems because this event would not have happened without them. 
So the first question here, uh, Tom and Mervin, is what should I look at to speed up my backup with BRMS? Um, um, so there's, there's numerous things that you can do, but uh, um, first of all, you need to make sure that you have um, that you have you have fairly recent tape technology. Uh, tape technology is changing all the time. It's, it has the ability. I mean, we, we, we get faster all the time. Also, you need to make sure that your hardware like your IOPs or HPAs are capable of driving the tape drive. Most times that, uh, when we look at performance, the tape drive isn't always the bottleneck. It's, it's the system. Uh, memory, CPU are very important to do with uh, that. Um, so, and also look at, consider doing uh, parallel saves or concurrent saves. That's what you can do. Yeah. Every case is every case is, is different, unfortunately. Um, but without investigating, looking at the system, it's very difficult to say. There's no one silver bullet that's going to make it back. Yeah, you know, one of the things I've always done over the years, Mervin, is is looked at the actual job log and kind of look at the different timings between <laughs> different libraries. And you might have you have some. There's different parameters in backup that can cause some problems, like you know maybe you're uh, compressing data or there's a step in there that you didn't realize it's going to a save file first and then it's going to tape and maybe you don't need to do that. I mean, we've seen all kinds of things when it comes to backup and recovery, especially when you're the new administrator and you've inter uh, you've inherited somebody else's procedures, right? Correct, yeah. Uh, uh, you, you do need to review each, each case is, is, is different, so you'd have to look at each one. Yep, exactly. Any more questions? Q and A panel is on the bottom right frame of the screen. Select to send to all panelists so we can see this. This next question is from the audience. We run 24 by 7. What is a backup strategy for system save and nightly backup? I would recommend that you you invest if you got uh, that you start looking at uh, flash copy um, together with uh, some toolkits that are available either from IBM or not to sure how systems have got one or not. But um, you can always contact me if you, from a, a toolkit point of view. We have toolkits that automate the, from a single command. You can go run and it'll go do a flash copy. It'll go RPL the target system, do a backup, and then send the BMS information back to the source. And um, so that will. Um, yeah, because. If I could add on to that, sure. uh, Mervin, if you don't mind. I mean, one of the things to think, because we have another question out there about flash copy. Um, there is a requirement. You do have to, it's an IBM SAN storage feature. So you have to have SAN storage. That's really the prerequisite. If you're internal disk, you can't use flash copy. But in essence, what you're doing is you're creating a image of your production environment into another partition and then you spin up that other partition to do your backups over there. So your production continues to run. There might be a a performance hit for a, for a, for, you know for just a few minutes on the system while it's doing the flash, but you're actually doing your backups on the target system. Um, you know the other thing people do is with HA software or hardware replication, they might do their backups over on their target system um, because they're they're using um, HA to replicate their production data from a source system to a target because of 24 hour you know, your business has gotten to that point where you have 24 hours of business on IBM I. Great question. And Brian asked the question of yeah, it does it support Dell or EMC or OEM. Um, the toolkits that IBM provide, it's IBM storage only. Now, if you had a SVC and you put your Dell or your EMC hardware behind the SVC, that will work. Oh, it well, okay. yep. But it has to be the, the IBM, uh, you have to have an SVC Right okay. We have a couple more minutes for questions. Q and A panel, right frame of the screen. Select to send to all panelists. This next question is: Should I use save while active with BRMS? Um. So I did. did um, I think I, I may have covered a lot of this earlier on. Saying save while active. Uh, save while active with BRMS is exactly the same as save while active with data save. 
we still have to get a lock on the object. Don't get a lock on the object, we will not be able to save it. So, uh, ideally, you want to you want to stop the applications, get your checkpoint, and then use the mon monitor stable active that will start the applications once checkpoint. Yeah. So I think at the end of the day, the story is yes, absolutely use save while active with BRMS. It's it's certainly something that it's it's capable of doing, and um, you know it's one of those things you probably want to go slow with it. You want to test it out independent of your normal backups to make sure that it doesn't do any impact uh, negatively. At the I think Ian said or Ian Mervin said something earlier that's really key on it. If you have exclusive locks on objects where somebody's like done a full out allocate object or the application is, that's what causes problems for save while active. You still need to be able to read the object and be able to get a good save of that, or it will get skipped by the even the save while active. Uh, one, one other comment on that is that when, when you're using save while active and, you, and your wait time is if you extend your wait time, your backups may get locked. Up. Uh, the question just came in from Jim. What upgrades and features are required to use flash copy and how much expense will be incurred? So from a from a BMS point of view, there's you just you just need the networking feature. I mean from but uh, uh, you would as we said, you would need external storage, sand storage like uh, uh, E7000, V5000, right? V5000, yeah, or FS9000, whatever those, the new ones are. Mm -hmm. um, you would need the flash copy license for it. I think some of them come standard now. Uh, and then uh, the other uh, the other big expense really is that you need to build a separate LPAR to do this. So you're going to need extra CPU, extra memory, extra I.O. cards, uh, communication cards. So you, you do need that ability to do it. now. If you have BIOS, it's quite easy to do. If you don't have BIOS, then it means you're buying extra cards. Yeah, it's really a good discussion with your uh, hardware business partner yep. to help you set up. And if you want, Jim, we can get you in contact with somebody. But if you know who that is, um, you know, that in itself might be a, a separate conversation. But there, you know, the thing you should know about Flash Copy is there's hundreds of customers that are already doing Flash Copy. It's not it's not new technology, is it, Mervyn? No, not at all. And if anyone's ever interested in doing a, a flash copy or a toolkit, we can do demos on that as well. Yeah. Very good. Let's see. We got uh, maybe time for one more question, Ian. Uh, yeah, this is another. another uh, Josh just sent in another question over here with BRMS parallel backups. We see one tape getting full and causing errors. Or three others only eighty percent full. Is there a way to make sure that more spread over it, over the tapes? Uh, yes. At uh, at 7.2 of BRMS, there's an option in BRMS that allows you to specify to uh, save by size. Uh, if you, you go into control group, work CTL, G, BRM, or wherever you do it, and you select option eight on it, and on the very the, the second to last screen, there's a sort by. You can specify sort by size. I don't think we have it in the in the presentation yet. Oh, I was thinking we did. Okay. No, no, I, put, I, don't think I put it in the presentation. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> no, sorry about that. Back to that slide. Yeah. Okay. There's, a, there's a sort by side, sort by, and the, the default is backup policy. You can sort by name, which is the real default, or you can sort by size. Yeah. If you try sorting by size, this should, the theory is that it should more equally spread the text, the, the data across all the text. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, seeing no other questions, why don't we go ahead and end. Uh, thank you for participating today. Thank you for joining this PowerCast presented by Help System. I will remind you once again that a replay and a handout will be available later on uh, tomorrow. And also, uh, Mervin and Tom, thank you very much for a great presentation. You're welcome. All right. Everybody thank have you, a good Mervin. day. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Ian. All right. Bye-bye.